So, while it is true that all women have to do right now is stand up and talk publicly and be the context that those twats on Twitter can't see, this is very, very true. But I'm going to discuss the biggest barrier to that. And the biggest barrier is, at this point in time, is shame. Now, I know this because I wandered around this world as the object that they have decided is discarded. And I get the responses because people don't want to look me in the face and say, actually, yes, there is consent that you should be removed from the rule of law and that you can go without food and you can have this. So I deal with this all the time. And this is one of the most terrible things that I learned in social work. And this is the thing that generates the most crisis. Now, we all... Every single one of us, me included, I have done this a million times, one of the most terrible things you learn as a social worker is how easy it is not to see what is in front of you, especially when somebody is reduced to an object in your own identity, when you are not seeing them as a person and you are seeing them as an object in your identity, and how easy it is to not see very terrible things that happen in front of you. And what happens at point in times like this is the fact that welfare reform was subject to absolute political consensus becomes very difficult. And what people start looking for is scalps and absolution. They want a scalp of somebody that they can pinpoint so they can say, you did this. Because what they don't want to admit and what nobody wants to look at is that actually this happened by consent and this happened because everybody wanted it to. And all our systems were geared up for that to happen. And so what you're going to see now is as women stand up all over the country, the same problem could re-emerge. And the thing that will threaten to derail that is the fact that many of the people who were in a situation where maybe they could have done something, or maybe they did support it, or they didn't, you know... For whatever reason, maybe because they didn't realise that preventing discussion of consensus on this was preventing discussion of that. Maybe they didn't realise that actually they're focused on this. Maybe they didn't realise. But at this point in time, we are at a very, very serious risk. So while the Labour left have done what they've done for us, and they've made themselves completely toxic, they've demanded this conversation, while the turf thing has come up and forced women organically all over the country to start recognising that equality for women is held up using safeguarding, protection from male violence, ability to do other things, and while women are finally saying, actually, we've kind of had enough and we're going to meet and talk publicly, the thing that will threaten to derail this is shame. Because when all those power dynamics come back together, it is very, very human to not want to say, actually, this was a consensus that I was part of. And so the biggest danger in the UK right now is that, and I know this is true, like, I'm unemployable. I'm completely unemployable because I am a single parent, because I am a person who was an object of policy because I have been forced in the last eight years to say actually that's the rule of law and you're not behaving well and I have every right to say that I've been withdrawn. I'm completely and utterly unemployable. I'm overqualified for the jobs that I would do locally and I can't even apply. I might as you know. I have been absolutely, it's been made clear to me. And part of the reason that I'm unemployable is because what I have to say is that this was by consent, this undermined the rule of law. This possibly killed about 100,000 people and I was in that population. And that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. And so it's this process now that we have to get through. All the shifts outlined in Playlist 1 have happened. Every political party has to get has to acknowledge those shifts and those systems to get out of this mess. But what we also have to get past is the last eight years, which was by consent. And it's actually fear of recognising that this was by consent that will lead to more crisis and protection of identity, which will lead to more crisis. So part of the reason that I'm making these videos is that so that I can say, as an object of policy during this period, as a woman for whom equality was rolled back, as somebody for whom everybody agreed that I could be removed from the rule of law to the point in time, 
to the point where on Twitter I am unabusable. You can do what you want to me. You can absolutely do what you want to me. Dawn Foster thinks that me being terrorised for eight years is her friends being bullied. And her friends have demonstrated how reduction of people to objects allows abuse. And I have to say, as someone who's worked with power dynamics for a long time, if you think you've seen the limits of what one human being can do to another once that person is reduced to an object, you think again, we are endlessly fucking creative on that score. So even though we have in our hands right now the ability to stand up and make all this shit fall apart, just as women, by standing up and saying we are the context that these people cannot see, we are also at a massively dangerous point in this country. And it's actually shame at the last eight years, and shame and not wanting to discuss the consequences of the last eight years, which may lead us to escalate, and which may lead us to actions which cause more harm. So I don't know if that made sense really, it might not have done.